So when I was 13 years old, I finally had convinced my parents to let me start riding and come to find out, you know, it took me 13 years to do it, but you know, all I had to do was show them that I could be responsible and I would pay for things and it was that easy. So I started riding when I was 13 and I really fell in love with it to say the least. I started taking lessons and then I had bought my first horse. It was man, like a couple months after I started taking lessons, I mean, we're getting the truck and be like, dad, I'm riding. Like, I love this. I need to get a horse. And so That's when I, you know, did a little negotiating and finally was able to get one and I really just took off from there. I started out doing 4-H and I absolutely loved the things that I learned there, but definitely was not my place. I loved the speed and I loved being able to just go fast, specifically run barrels. And so I quit doing that and I started high school rodeoing my junior year of high school. So I didn't get to high school rodeo a super long time, unfortunately, but I absolutely loved it. And after high school, I went in and I started competing in a pro rodeo association that was ran in Utah and Idaho. I didn't have my card at that time. And I really just went at it. And I absolutely fell in love with it. And during that time, I also had picked up a job um, training these big, huge draft horses to do medieval jousting. And so, you know, they were these big old, you know, 2,000 pound, per strong, quarter horse, um, Frisian mix. I mean, man, they were mixed amazingly. They were gorgeous. And picked that job up and I really just started from there and really started to learn how to train and learn more how horses worked. And I, you know, would get on almost, you know, six to ten horses every day and I just learned so much doing that. And, you know, after a year and a half of doing that, I had a little bit of a hiccup and got in an accident. I had like a 1,700 pound horse fall on me. So it was exciting, kind of put a kink in my training career. And then after that, I decided that I was kind of done and I was going to kind of go the barrel horse route. And then I kind of, you know, picked up more teaching lessons. I'd done that a little bit in the past. And then I picked up more of that. And I really just started to, you know, take young horses, kind of train them on barrels, do it that way. Um, As well as I really just um, enjoyed training others. I love, love, love training others. I love seeing their progress together. And ultimately, I love taking these young horses and seeing how far they'll go. So I fell in love with that probably with the draft horses, but kind of decided that barrel horses was where I wanted to be at. And so I kind of just started doing that and I absolutely fell in love with it and, you know, probably do it to the end of, you know, the rest of my life. I'll probably be dead on horseback or something at some point, but I absolutely love it. I definitely feel like my future has a lot of horse training still in it. Uh, Like I said, I'm not done. I really am just getting going I would say. Um, Ultimately I would love to have my own training horse facility and really be able to help others, coach others, um, probably take on some client horses as well as do a lot of clinics. So I just absolutely love teaching others and I love helping others um, when their knowledge ends. I love to help them and see their progression so that's honestly kind of where I'll be going with that. If I could give any advice to someone who's really wanting to train horses for a living or even just do it on the side, I honestly would just say get a lot of time in the saddle. Get on a whole bunch of different horses. Make sure you know how to train. Make sure you know how to teach. Make sure you know how to be a people person and how to help people with their horses, how to take their frustrations and be able to fix them and help the horse bond together with the human. It's just, I mean, the ultimately... The biggest thing is you're really, you know, being able to help that person and horse get along. Who cares if you can ride it great? You have to help them be able to get along with the horse as well. And so I really just think making sure that you know how to teach and making sure that you know how to coach and you really know how to train. You know um, your abilities and what you can give to somebody and make sure you have a really good reputation. Make sure you're a good people person. Make sure that you're really able to show people that you care and be genuine about it. And I think, honestly, if people see that and they think that you can train good enough, people are going to really just start coming to you and trusting you. And, you know, know that it's not going to happen overnight. You have to take years and years and years of learning and learning how to coach people, learning how to train horses, learning how to get along with people. It just takes so much time, so much effort, but it's so worth it and you can make it. (laughs) 